Palettes, palettes, palettes. Let's look at some tools to develop a palette that will help springboard your image. Welcome to SETI Astro. I think everybody is familiar with normal channel combination to get whichever palette they prefer. I wanted to look at some other tools that I think are better than just channel combination to get our initial palette. One other point I'd like to say about palettes is I consider them a jumping off point to really adjusting the colors and bringing out the details we want in our images. Color in our narrowband images especially is very subjective. Unless you're doing scientific work where you're just going to combine your channels in a linear fashion and call it a day and maybe just do a simple stretch to highlight within the, uh, the paper itself. This is all just a little bit of art on our end to highlight what we want to present to our audience and to ourselves. So it is quite a bit of a matter of personal taste. With that said, let's go ahead and look at some tools beyond just channel combination. First tool that I wanted to look at was LRGB combination. Now we all know channel combination, it's quick and easy. Uh, I'll just demonstrate on uh, the Hubble palette here, SHO. But using LRGB combination, you can assign your luminance layer. Uh, a lot of the time you'd like to use hydrogen since it probably does have the most data and is uh, the broadest throughout the entire image. Now here is the LRGB combination with hydrogen as the luminance. And we can uh, look at the difference between the two you'd see that the normal channel combination is kind of softer throughout and doesn't highlight the nebula as much. And then the LRGB combination really does make the nebula stand out quite a bit more and reduces some of that background noise. So just for uh, normal uh, channel combinations that you may be using, HSO, HOO, those items, strongly recommend just using LRGB combination instead of channel combination. The next couple tools that we'll look at are scripts. I'll have the repository links in the description below for all of them. Next one I do want to look at is 4AX. Uh, we found under Utilities, 4AX Palette Utility. Now the 4AX is a uh, very unique palette that it will change how it's presenting the palettes and combining the images based on the brightness levels of the associated hydrogen, oxygen, and sulfur channels. This particular script is great since it can uh, use just two or three channels. So if you just have HO, you can go ahead and use a Forex script on just HO. If you have SHO data, you can go ahead and use it on uh, the SHO data. It will also combine the stars in its own palette which I use a lot of the time to combine uh, narrowband stars. Even if I'm not using the Forex palette, I'll still run this script just to uh, combine the stars in a very nice palette uh, for the narrowband stars. I almost always use this for the stars. So let's uh, check it out for HO and SHO. Now it does develop a couple different masks when it runs. You may or may not want to use them later. Now let's go ahead and compare just the HO 4X palette versus HOO. Here's the HO 4X palette here. It definitely has more of the uh, rusty reds and oranges. And then here is just straight combination for HOO where it has more of that salmon pink and uh, teal green. So as a starting off point to springboard adjusting colors in your image, the 4X palette does offer a lot more variation within the color structure itself to uh, amplify different regions pretty easily from it. Running the 4X script on SHO data uh, does make a, a nice difference here in the core. You can see that there are some uh, a lot of other color variation from including the sulfur channel in there. 
Uh, so if you are going to use Forex script and you do have all three channels, you will definitely get more color variation uh, by utilizing it. One other item I wanted to talk about real quick is greens in your image. Again, this is as much art as it is anything else. A lot of people don't like green in their image, that's fine. Some people keep some greens and yellows in there to highlight some other structures in there. I think that's fine too. Again, it's what you're trying to present out of your image to everybody else and what's pleasing to yourself. Stars that 4X Palette Script was able to uh, combine. And these are all narrowband stars and you can just see how much nicer this looks than other combination methods. We got some nice oranges on that bright one and some reds, some nice blues around here. And then even zooming in quite far, you can see the, the color variation on the stars and there's plenty of white ones. It, it does just a really great job with narrowband stars. The next tool is another script under Script Utilities, Narrowband Color Mapper. Now there is a uh, very long video by Adam Block on this particular script, but we'll go through just some of the uh, some of the additions and main points. The, the great thing about this script is you can assign colors to each channel and layer them up. Uh, so if you want to get a, a more natural looking palette, I would highly recommend utilizing this script versus any uh, anything in pixel math. So we'll load in uh, the sulfur channel first. And we want uh, sulfur to be a, a red color. We don't need uh, STF since we already are uh, stretched. When you get the, the color you want for sulfur, you, you click update. And then we want to add another layer. Now let's go ahead and add our hydrogen. And hydrogen uh, is, a, is kind of a rusty orange, kind of in between. And then we'll finally add our oxygen. And oxygen itself sits pretty much directly between green and blue. There is a option if you want to do background neutralization as well. In order to do that you can click and drag a small region and then uh, click the region of interest button over here and we'll apply that as the background neutralization preview and double clicking the preview will take you back to the overall image. Now with this tool it's very easy to overexpose some of these items so you may want to uh, edit them and bring down the histogram we'll just adjust the midtones down a little bit quickly when you're done adjusting uh, histogram controls or anything else in here uh, background neut neutralization there is some output options as well just hit the green check And there we go. A nice natural color palette without uh, trying to do any weird multiplications or anything in pixel math. I will say a uh, little bit of caution using that tool. It tends to uh, quickly overblow some of the highlighted areas. So you really got to utilize that histogram uh, option in there and adjust the, the midtones up to, to bring down some of those highlights. But Overall, a much, uh, a much more natural palette if that's uh, what you'd like to go for in your initial starting off point. The next script is actually in Jurgen's toolbox. If you already have the toolbox for uh, Grax, Bird, Continuum Subtraction, uh, there's also one in here for Narrowband Hue Combination. Now this one uh, is very similar to the other Narrowband combination tool that we just looked at by Adam Block and this one's by Jurgen. Here uh, you are limited to really just three layers versus the uh, as many layers as you want with the uh, other narrow band tool. So 
so you could do load in just your hydrogen, oxygen, and uh, sulfur. Click the preview. And you can see uh, the initial starting off point. Now you can adjust the hues for each of these as well. If you do want the uh, hydrogen to be that orange and your sulfur to be that red, you can adjust those. And then the other thing that's nice in here too is it does have an SCNR for green. Uh, if you do have a lot of green in your image, let's go ahead and uh, kind of make it more of a Hubble palette here quickly. And then it does have the uh, slider here for that. And then when you're done, you just click uh, generate. Now I will say the uh, T Jurgen's toolbox narrowband hue combination is simpler than the other narrowband combination tool. Uh, so if you are utilizing just three channels, you potentially may want to just use the uh, Jurgen's toolbox script versus Adam Block's script. But if you do want to have uh, even more additional layers or have a finer control in the script itself, Adam Block's script has a lot more of those options to it. Now, as I've said before, I always think of the initial palette as just the springboard to start your color adjustments to enhance what you want to present in your image. Here's just nine different, nine different palettes. I have a natural palette that I use Adam Block's script to develop. There's the 4X palette here, and then we have a lot of various ones. Hubble down on the right, here's an HSO uh, that I do utilize a lot, especially if I'm combining uh, narrowband into galaxies. Uh, sometimes it really makes the hydrogen region nice and red, the oxygen uh, supernova remnants stand out in blue, and if you do have sulfur, it does kind of bridge the gap between the two. So it may look weird and magenta on this nebula, but with narrowband data and galaxies, it may work out well yet for you. Here's HOO down in the lower left. And then just a whole bunch that people don't use very often that maybe we should be using. Maybe we wanna have some of these other colors out there uh, just, to, just to present the data in your images in ways that others haven't done so yet. OSH does have some really unique views to it. Kind of gives it a uh, more ethereal look to some of the some of the data. One last point about the uh, stars uh, to get them back into the image. I do like to just use a simple screen and pixel math, uh, but to do the stretching, I usually just use histogram transformation. and uh, do a couple iterations of just adjusting the midtones down until I get to a point that I'm roughly at the brightness I like. And then uh, maybe just a, a, a little tweak on the stars on that last one. And there you go, just a, a quick view in palettes. I'll have some other follow-up videos on color correction. It was just too much to put in one video. I do hope you liked the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe.